Hey everyone, I'm Garth, the Animation Tutor, and it's that time of the year where I see all of my students' marks from their portfolios that they've submitted to Sheridan Animation to judge whether they've been accepted or not into the program. And I wanted to do a quick video just running through some of the general weaknesses that I tend to see among most portfolios that I look at. So the number one thing that I probably see as a weak area is life drawing. So life drawing is a practice that everyone needs to keep up on a regular basis and also paired with learning anatomy because often I find that the form uh, of, the, of the pose, especially a gesture, feels way too loose and not really nicely connected. Each of the different limbs don't connect together as fluidly as they could. And the lines could convey a much better sense of motion uh, and, and the line of action could be a lot stronger. But the number one problem with life drawing is absolutely just knowing the anatomy and applying that form onto the pose. So the second most common thing that I see among most of my students is just general knowledge of perspective. So this isn't just exclusive to the two layouts, but also storyboard and occasionally in personal work. Although honestly, I don't see that much perspective knowledge demonstrated in the personal work. So that's another issue with this. Um, but with perspective, I would love to see more uses of uh, both two, but, but more importantly, three point perspective. If you look at a lot of existing and strong animation artwork that is in fr from industry level artists, uh, you will see that they use three point perspective most often. So you're often you know, adjusting the vertical lines as well as the horizontal lines so that you get more dynamic views of perspective. And I see that not very common at all. Um, and also just more dynamic, more extreme and more engaging views of perspective as well would be great to see applied. Number three on my list of, of general weaknesses is uh, stylistic similarities. Um, so this is, I think this happens most often when students are um, huge fans of animation, which is great, um, but it's not great if, you're, if your only pool of inspiration to draw from when you're making your own artworks is animation that already exists because then your work is going to be very iterative. It's going to feel very similar. It's going to feel like it's kind of uh, repackaging artwork that already exists. I find it's much more effective to go uh, to different sources that are perhaps le less um, algorithmically selected and shown to you. So not things that you'd find on Pinterest, but actual books at a library. And also from just real life, it's, you can get so many wonderful characters and personalities just from life itself. But I find a lot of students see a character in a movie and they want to make something like that when really you should be sourcing from the original source material itself, real life. So number four on my list of weak areas is the personal work. Um, I think a lot of students see personal work as just sort of the, the leftovers at the end of their portfolio process. After they've gone through all the required pieces, they grab whatever other artwork they have and they kind of just heap it into a big pile and that becomes their personal work. Um, I try to encourage my students to select and create artwork for their personal pieces very precisely to target different areas that are most commonly required in the animation industry. So uh, prop designs, vehicle designs, background designs, urban sketching, um, characters, although I hesitate to mention that because characters are the most common thing that I see in personal work. So things beyond characters would be, would be best. And even a fully fleshed out story, you could create an entire pitch package of a, of a production that you, you would want to pitch to a, a production house. Um, so that will require all kinds of different designs, maybe even a storyboard. That's the way to think about this. Not so much as sort of a dumpster heap of what, whatever artwork you have, but very carefully fine-tuned artwork that is specific to animation. So the fifth one on my list is also the absolutely, the weakest area of every student and most common among all of my students as well is less of a, a, an applied art skill and more of a sort of holistic uh, skill of students, which is just time management. So, uh, so many students leave their portfolios way too late or they're just doing each of the portfolio assignments for the first time in the process of making their portfolio, which is another thing that I recommend against. Uh, it's much better to do each of the assignments once before and then do it again because you always learn so much from having done it once before. So, but generally just, you know, arranging your time, uh, treating yourself like a professional artist, like how it would be in the animation industry. You kind of need to um, work as hard at this as you would any of your regular high school work. 
Uh, but it's hard when you don't have a teacher there sort of pointing at you to tell you to get your work done. And this is part of what I help to try to build in with my students because I'm, I'm, I'm a tutor and so I, I kind of keep them on a, on a regular schedule of producing work. But however you can do it, time management, if you're going to work on anything the most, it's just time management, time management, time management. So anyways, I hope this list of these five weak areas among students is helpful. Um, I just wanted to, to let you know because I, I see these things so often that uh, I just wanted to, yeah, help to summarize perhaps what might be some of your problems. And if you're interested to learn more, uh, check out our website, check out what I do. Um, this is entirely what I help students with. All right, thanks a lot, everyone.